I'll do that. Let's see how this plays out, and then we'll see what happens four months later. Prima. Anton, was ist das? Das ist ein... Das ist? Pferdchen. Wie macht das Pferdchen? <lacht> Prima, Anton, fein. Was ist das? Ein Schmetterling. Prima. Leg drauf. Prima. Oh, du. Was ist das, Anton? Was ist das? Wow. Mach's besser, was ist was? Ein wow. Hund. Hund. Wie macht der Hund? Wow, wow, wow. Prima. Nix drauf. Was ist das, Anton? Eine Giene. Gira. Gira. Genau. Prima, Anton. Nix drauf. Fein, die macht jetzt kannst du schaukeln. Komm. Jetzt kannst du wieder schaukeln. Oh, zeig mir Klatschen. So. Mhm. Möchtest du Flips, Anna? Ja. Zeig mir Klatschen. Hier ist einmal Klatschen. Wo ist deine Nase? Hier ist deine Nase. Prima. Wo ist dein Bauch? Hier ist dein Bauch. Wo sind Mamas Augen? Hier ist Mamas Augen. Prima. And when we were with him the first time, all he ever did was echo he, or yell for things he wanted. Now he's answering questions and participating and learning. Danke. 
In die Giraffe. In die Giraffe. Bringst dann die hin. Geh zu Nadine und hol den Elefant. Geh zu Nadine und den Elefant. So, was soll ich machen? Prima. Bring Papa. Bring Papa. What Dad was saying was, okay, holding up two animals, saying, take the giraffe and bring it to Mom, or bring it to Nadine. So he had to follow the instructions of going, seeing which animal, taking it, knowing who to go to, and bring it to them. And then he was giving them another instruction. Go to Nadine and get the elephant. So then he had to think, okay, I have to go to someone, and I have to get something, what do I have to get? Oh yeah, the elephant, and then Dad forgot to tell him where to take it. So he, he, he was following the instructions, he gets the elephant, then he stands there like this and goes, hmm. And then everybody realizes, oh, we didn't tell him what, what it is we wanted to do. Now, the important thing to realize is that he doesn't have to do any of this. No one is physically forcing him to do any of this. If he chooses not to do it, he doesn't have to do it. But what happens is access to, to that kingdom over here where he's the prince and the king and queen may give you instructions, but they're also going to give you all kinds of attention and games and toys. That's all going on while he's doing this. If he ever chooses to not do this and walk away, he can go back over here and be the king of his own castle. But we've shown him that that's not a place he wants to be. There's no benefit in being here. There's no fun here. There's no games. There's no extra toys. There's no tickles or hugs or all that kind of stuff doesn't happen over here. So he's choosing to spend his time over here, which gives us the access we need to really start to see the kind of progress he's capable of. Now again, this is six months. This took six months to get there. But it took um, five full days of Canosp ABA service with us. This was the sixth day. So that's pretty good, considering we're only charging for eight hours a day, six days over six months. That's pretty good progress. And that's what our intention and our goal is, is to make families independent in their ability to use these techniques to help. And then we also go in and then we work with the kindergarten. And we work with the school and we teach them how to do it as well. And once the child's entire adult surrounding knows how to interact with them in these kind of ways, the child's entire life is about learning. Not just when they sit at the table and have chocolate chips there to be given to them when they do what they're supposed to do. But their whole life is like, hey, how, how do I learn? Who do I learn from next? What, what's, I want to play, so I need to find an adult. I need to find something to do. Now, what do we teach them? Why are we teaching him to take an elephant and bring it to somebody or, or bring it to someone else? What is it that we teach him? Um, now, first thing I want to say at this point is that verbal behavior and ABA, it's not different. It's the same thing. ABA in general is the science of understanding how and why people learn and how to apply that science to help children with, with, with disabilities or to help whoever you want to help with it. Um, and the science uh, exists in um, scientific journals. There's studies that are showing that these certain things that are, are working are being successful. All of that exists. How we want to approach those things depends upon our experiences with those studies and what we're seeing and how it works with the kids and basically what the data tells us. Traditional ABA programs tend to take a lot of data trial by trial, which means every single time you saw him do something he was asked to do, someone would have to take a note as to whether he did it successfully or not. In verbal behavior, we don't want the teacher spending that much time with their nose in the clipboard. We want the teacher to be a teacher. So we do probe data, where we only, take, we only take trials the first part of the session, where we try everything one time, where we take data on it. And the rest of the time we're with the child is just all day long, we're just teaching and playing and pairing. And then we take pro data again the next day. And if he's able to do it the very first time, three sessions in a row, three days in a row, chances are he's remembering it overnight and able to do it the next day, three times in a row, chances are pretty good he's got it. So then we only start testing it once a week. And if he's got it once a week, then we only look at it once a month. And if he's got it once a month, then he's pretty much, he's got it. We'll still keep teaching it throughout our day every now and then because we like to mix in easy skills with hard ones. And there's all kinds of tricks behind how we do this stuff which I will explain in, in workshop one if we ever have a chance.